Hello everyone. It has been a long time that I have uh, provided a new presentation. So today let's discuss what is Levinar and how to detect Levinar and why is it used in Wi-Fi deployment. Now let's start with one of the concepts known as Levinar which is the necessity of the wireless network system to provide uninterrupted services to a user. Today's presentation includes Levinar and its basics, types of Levinar, Levinar capability detection, basic four-way handshake, FT four-way handshake, FT key hierarchy, over the air type of Levinar system, and over the distributed uh, system type of Levinar. Let's try to understand what is Levinar and how is it implemented and its purpose. As you know, if your client moves from AP1 to AP2 within same ESS, following shall be observed. Client first tries to associate to AP1 and generate keys using four-way handshake. When client moves near AP2 and tries to associate to AP2, again four-way handshake takes place. Finally, time taken to roam between APs of same ESS is high due to which there might be interruption in traffic which might not be acceptable with traffics such as void etc. Hence, Levinar has been introduced. Levinar reduces the transition time between APs in an ESS by depleting four-way handshake with Fourier trans DSS transition frames. Levinar defines two different mechanisms to overcome defici deficiencies of roaming and to provide un uninterrupted access. Two methods supported are over the air and over the DS. Over the DS is nothing but over the distributed system. Let's discuss in brief about these methods. Over the air. It's a mechanism wherein client communicates directly with the target AP over the air using fast transition frames to get authenticated and to generate encryption creeps. Next method is over the DS. In this mechanism, clients gets authenticated with tar target AP via current AP and then generates encryption keeps by communicating to target AP directly. Levinar introduced two new information elements other than enhancements in existing information elements. The new information elements are mobility domain information element and fast DSS transition information element. Mobility domain information elements provides information relate, related to mode of Levinar and mobility domain name. Whereas Fast basis transition information element provides information related to parameter exchange that happens in regular four-way handshake with Levinar parameters. I think now you you would have you would have an idea what Levinar does. Now it's time to understand how a user should be ab able to detect if an AP supports Levinar or not. If an AP supports Levinar, two IEs, that is information elements, should be observed in beacon frames. If robust security network information element contains FT using PSK or FT using 1x in AKM management field and if mobility domain information element is present, in the beacon, then it is said to be that that AP supports Levinar. So now let's try to understand the basic four-way handshake and try to differentiate with the FT four-way handshake that takes place in with a Levinar compatible AP and client. As it is aware that purpose of four-way handshake is to generate dynamic keys unique for each client connected to the BSS ID, pairwise transient key which is PTK and group temporal key which is GTK are the two dynamic keys generated from four-way handshake mechanism. 
Now let's try to understand when and where the PTK and GTK are used. PTK. PTK is unique key generated for each client connected to your BSS ID. PTK is generated using pseudo random function with parameters such as RSN information element, client address, AP address, A norms, and S norms. PTK is used to encrypt unicast traffic only. Now let's see what is GTK. GTK is unique key generated by AP and shared across all clients connected to that BSS ID. GTK is renewed. When your client disassociates, GTK is used to encrypt multicast and broadcast traffic. Now please watch this slide clear. As you can see that 4-way handshake ePOL frames contains only RSN information as WPA key data. Now let's try to understand the difference between normal 4-way handshake and an FT 4-way handshake. In the basic four-way handshake, in the basic four-way handshake, if you look at the figure, the AP sends a nonce value to the station. The client now has all the attributes to construct the PTK. The station sends its own nonce value to the target AP together with a MIC, including authentication which is really a message authentication and integrity code. The AP sends the GTK and a sequence number to get together with another MIC. This sequence number will be used in the next multicast or broadcast frame so that the receiving station can perform basic replay detection. The station sends a confirmation to the AP. The, the reason why I am concentrating on this protocol is to differentiate between normal four-way handshake parameters and then FT four-way handshake parameters. As you can see, parameters used in generating dynamic keys are s norms, a norms, PMKR1, FT information element, mobility domain information element, AP address, client address, in the equal frames of FT four way handshake. Figure displayed is the state machine of a Levenar client trying to associate to Levenar AP. When a client joins a mobility domain, it uses open authentication, FT association request and response frames, and an FT equal frames. Please watch this slide carefully. As you can see, that FT four way handshake ePOL frames contains RSN information element with PMKR1, fast transition in information element, and mobility domain information element as WPA key, key data. I hope everyone had captured the difference between the normal four way handshake and FT four way handshake. When a client joins a mobility domain, it uses open system authentication, FT association request response, and FT ePOL frames. The EAP mutual authentication exchange between the client and AP and distribution of MSK to the authenticator by the authentication server follow. Once the PMK RO and PMK R1 keys are derived at the RO KH device, and unique PMK R1 keys are distributed to R1 keys. Then an FT four way handshake can be used to develop a PTK SCA at the R1 KH and S1 KH. Once the PTK R1 keys are distributed, there is no need to go through this initial process again within the same mobility domain. This slide is just a capture of how keys are generated, and this is mostly used by the designers. An AP must announce its specific support for over-the-air fast BSS transition in the mobility domain information element in beacons, probe response, and association slash reassociation response. A client wishing to associate to an FT enabled authenticator must have matching mobility domain information element information 
in its authentication and reassociation request and association request when roaming within a mobility domain using over the air ft clients users ft authentication request and response and ft reassociation request and response frames as a part of four frame reassociation reassociation exchange these four frames contain the appropriate information to build a ptk sk between the target ap and the client no eap or four way handshake is necessary to unlock the 1x control port i have captured the frames during client roaming from current ap to target ap using over the air method this slide contains capture of ft authentication frames as you can see epol four way key exchange takes place in these frames to derive ptk and ft authentication frames contain rsn information element mobility domain information element and fast transition information element and i have captured the frames during client roaming from current ap to target ap using the over the air method this slide contain captures of ft reassociation frames as you can see epol four way key exchange takes place in these frames to derive gtk and ft authentication frames contain rsn information element and mobility domain information element and fast transition information element and in over the ds mode an ap must announce its specific support for over the ds fast dss transition in the mobility domain information element in beacons probe response and association to association response the client wishing to associate it to an ft enabled authenticator must have matching mobility domain information element in its authentication and reassociation request when roaming within a mobility domain using over the ds ft station uses ft action frames and ft reassociation request response frames as part of a four frame reassociation exchange these four frame contain the appropriate information to build a ptk sk between the target ap and the client no eap or four way handshake is necessary to unlock the 1x control port ft action frames in over the ds method is communicated with the target ap through current ap and the central entity whereas ft reassociation frames is communicated directly with the target ap I have captured the frames during client roaming from current AP to target AP using over the DS method. This slide contains captures of FT action frames. As you can see, EPOL four-way key exchange takes place in these frames to derive PTK and FT authentication frames. Contain RSN information element, mobility domain information element, and fast transition information. Element. Whereas FT reassociation frames are same as shown. in the over the air method i hope i have covered all basic concepts of webinar and how it works if you have any queries please email me at shashank.thadkamadla@gmail.com